Hello and welcome to Physics Platter. In Physics Platter, today we are going to have an introductory lecture on work power and energy. We will have quick discussion on the definitions of the work power and energy and their SI CGS units uh, and their relationships. All right, so let's start with the work. Work is a scalar quantity. It is represented as W. <coughs> it is said to be that work is done. It is said that work is uh, done when uh, a body is moved by a force for a displacement. All right. Then it is said that the force has done some work on that body. That means when a force applies on a body and the body moves from one place to another place, that means there is a displacement in the body. The work is done by the body, uh, by the force. All right. So that's the work. Now, what is the measurement of the work? If the displacement is D, force is F, then the work is given as a force into displacement. All right. Now, work is a scalar quantity. Force is a vector quantity. Displacement is also a vector quantity. All right. So that we know that a scalar quantity can be achieved by two way multiplying two vector quantities only by dot product that means simply f uh, work equals to the dot product product of the force and, and the displacement all right that's the work in another way we can say that let's say there is a body here let's say there is a body here a force is applied along this direction let's say and because of that force the body moves horizontally along this direction and again the displacement is d let's say okay now what is the work done by the force in this case in this case we have to in any case actually we have to remember that the force that we multiply with the displacement must be the force that is reason that is the responsible one for this displacement not the actual force all right that means the actual component of the force that is responsible for the displacement of the body let's say this is theta angle theta so force is applied on the body at an angle theta with the horizontal let's say all right so in this case we can say that the work equals to f cos theta which is the component of the force along this direction into the displacement all right now f is a vector d is a vector we know that f d cos theta when we multiply two vectors and the result is f d cos theta that means it's a dot product so f dot t in this way also we can say that work is given by the dot product of the force applied on the body and the displacement occurred in the body due to that force all right so that's the work Clearly from here we can say that the SI unit of SI unit of the work is Newton. Uh, let me write here. So SI unit of work is basically Joule. From here, let me write here again, force into displacement. That means Newton meter, which is written as Joule or j simply j all right that's the si unit of work uh, cgs unit is arg cgs unit is arg which is given as a dyne cgs unit of force into the displacement is centimeter all right so dyne centimeter is arc in cgs that's the unit of the work in CGS system. All right, we can find quick uh, we can find quick relation between them. How one joule equals to one newton into one meter. We can say right now one newton equals to how much time? Ten to the power five time into one meter is hundred centimeter. So five plus two that is ten to the power seven. R, dyne centimeter or R. So, 1 joule equals to 10 to the power 7 R. That's the relation between the joule and R or SI unit and the CGS unit of the work done. 
it's a scalar quantity mind it all right okay dimension so if we talk about the dimension of work what will that be now we know work equals to force into displacement the dimension of force is what as we all know that m l t to the power minus 2 that's the dimension of f dimension of d is simply l that means dimension of work becomes this should not be equal yeah m l square t to the power minus 2 that's the dimension of the work okay so this is our work now let's talk about power uh, before going to power let's talk about few types of work done on or by the force if let's say uh, let's say a body is dropped from a height it will fall because of the gravitational force right because the because of the weight of the body it will simply fall now the weight of the gravitational force of the body acts along the downwards towards the center of the earth and due to that force the body falls that means the displacement of the body happens because of this force and in this case the force and the displacement are in the same direction so when the force and displacement are in the same direction then simply w equals to f because f and d are both vectors both are positive in this case or negative also we can say then f into d or we can say work is positive right that means in this case when the force and displacement are in the same direction the work is said to be done by the force and it is positive in another way if a body a stone let's say is thrown upward that will also the stone will also have some displacement right but in this case the force gravitational force or the weight of the body acts downwards or towards the center of the earth whereas the displacement happens in the opposite direction right force along downwards displacement in the opposite direction or upward in this case force and displacement are in the opposite directions but that means if we consider one vector as positive then other must be a negative one so in this case my work will be if f is positive then d is negative so fd that means minus fd that means it's a negative work all right so when force and displacement are in the opposite directions then the work is said to be negative or generally the work is said to be done against the force all right in this case all right another example if we as we know that w equals to f d cos theta now let's say a body is moving along this direction due to some force of course and then it has a displacement d now if we want to calculate the work done by the gravitational force or on or, or against the gravitational force how much will that be what is the gravitational force mg or the weight of the body and that acts downwards whereas the displacement is in the horizontal direction so what is the angle between the force and the displacement here 90 degree that means theta equals to 90 degree here that means total work done equals to how much f d cos 90 degree which is what is cos 90 degree cos 90 degree is zero that means total work done is zero in this case where the force is uh, perpendicular to the displacement of the body such work done uh, such a force is called the no work force that means it is not doing any work on the body all right that's a no work force so how many uh, in which cases can you have the no work force of course when the force is uh, perpendicular to the displacement or the force is zero all right then also we can say the total work is zero another example can be if uh, a body of mass anything and we apply let's say a, a force is applied on the on the body and the body moves along a random direction and then it is it ends up in the same position where it started so what is the total displacement here the total displacement is zero in this case also we can say that the total work on the body is zero 
all right because the displacement is zero and the force into displacement is a work so total work is zero all right okay power power let's say there are two students pushing a stone individually first student applies a force and then brings a stone to displacement d in let's say 10 seconds all right so a student applies or a person applies a force on a body and then because of that force the body moves to a displacement d all right in 10 seconds so the student can move the, bo the body uh, for a d displacement in 10, 10 seconds another student this is student one let's say another student student two moves the same stone to the same displacement d in let's say five seconds all right first student moves the stone for the uh, displacement d for in 10 seconds whereas the second student moves that same stone of the same mass through a displacement d in five seconds so what is the difference between these two students we call the first to the second student is more powerful the second student is more powerful than powerful than the first student because he or she can move the stone to the same displacement in less time so basically power which is represented as p is given by the rate of doing work rate of doing work or equals to work by time all right so power is given as a work per time power is also a scalar quantity because it is simply rate of doing work work by time w by time w is a scalar quantity it is also a scalar quantity so it is a scalar quantity all right so cgs a unit is simply we can write the units first let's say si unit si unit would be work per time means work in si is what joule per second which is also given as watt or simply w okay so si unit of power is watt or joule per second cgs unit cgs unit of power is again what per uh, work per time means arg per second all right so cgs unit is arg per second there is another practical unit generally what per second is used you know uh, in the household bulbs and uh, many electrical devices you can see the power as let's say 1000 watt 100 watt 60 watt something like that that's simply the power of the bulb or simply the power of the device that you use it's written on the on the device there are bigger units also bigger units can be kilowatt kw which is equals to 10 to the power 3 watt of course kilo means 10 to the power 3 you know 1000 watt or megawatt megawatt which is 10 to the power 6 watt that's even bigger bigger uh, unit of the power and there is another practical unit of power which are used in even bigger powers and that's horsepower hp written as hp horsepower one horsepower is equals to 746 watt that's the okay all right now p equals to w by t power equals to work per time equals to, now work we know that force into displacement divided by time now displacement divided by time we can also vectorically you can write f dot d by t now d by t is displacement by time is what velocity 
because v equals to you know d by t displacement by time right so we can simply write f dot v or simply write f v cos theta all right so power is given as a multiplication of force and the velocity in the same direction okay all right so that's the power let's move on to energy now what is energy energy is the capability of a body to do work it is simply the capability capability of a body to do work so whenever a body has some energy stored in that that body can do some work all right there are several forms of energy like electrical energy light energy sound energy magnetic energy uh, mechanical energy uh, chemical energy atomic energy and so on mechanical energy let's talk about the mechanical energy that's the topic of our interest here mechanical energy mechanical energy is said to be uh, an energy which is stored in a body or uh, which is uh, which is uh, exhausted in a body by a body when the body is allowed to work all right allowed to do some work there are two types of mechanical energy of course we know that the potential energy potential energy and kinetic energy potential and kinetic energy there are two types of mechanical energy so basically mechanical energy is nothing but the energy which is stored in a body due to its position velocity motion or its shape let's talk about the potential energy first now before going to the potential energy we must know that the unit SI unit of energy is simply because the energy as I told you it is the amount of work done by the body right simply amount of work done total amount of work done until it is completely exhausted so SI unit of mechanical or uh, simply energy is nothing but the energy of the work which is joule and CGS is org all right relation between them we have already calculated so unit of energy and unit of work done are same all right okay mechanical energy potential and kinetic energy potential energy let's talk about the potential energy first what is potential energy potential energy is something which is stored in a body of course it's energy it's a form of energy that is stored in a body due to its position and shape due to its position and shape due to its position and shape alone it does not depend on the motion of the body it depends only on the position and the shape of the body all right so it's a form of the mechanical energy which is stored in a body due to its position and shape examples position let's talk about the position first let's say if we bring a body to a height we lift a body to a height h due to that height if the body stays there it has some potential energy now if you release this body or if you allow this body to do that work do some work or do allow this body to fall it will of course fall and then the body will do some work if you keep something if you keep your hand here let's say you will get hurt because the body has some energy and that energy is released here right so due to its position only it has some energy stored in the in inside it right how much energy is that and that energy is the potential energy and that potential energy is uh, the energy stored in this body due to its height only 
right so it is position only it does not matter if it moves along the horizontal direction or in any direction with some velocity <coughs> all right so how much uh, how much potential energy is stored in the body as i told you the energy is equivalent to the work done so basically whatever work is done on the body is stored inside the body as potential energy so how much work is done on the body to bring this body to this height the uh, let's say the mass of the body is m of course the weight of the body is mg that means we have to apply a force along that direction a force which is which must have a minimum value of mg right so here f equals to mg and displacement equals to h which is of which are of course in the opposite direction that means we have to work uh, against the gravitational force or weight of the body that means here work equals to negative and that is equals to force into displacement equals to m g h here we can we can simply omit the negative sign because it's a scalar quantity so we are we are only worried about the magnitude of the work done all right so m g h that is the work done on the body to lift the body from the ground to the height h and that energy or that work done must be stored in that body in the form of potential energy so potential energy stored in the body due to its position is given as m g h all right so that's the potential energy now let's talk about the potential energy that is stored in the body due to its shape let's say there is a spring here if we consider a spring which is fixed at one point now if we pull this spring it is the normal unstretched spring in this condition okay, okay now if we pull this spring and stretch the spring up to this direction let's say up to this distance all right d what will happen if you release the spring this will simply go back to its original shape all right that means at this position the spring had some energy and that energy is stored in the spring because of its shape now the shape has changed we have changed the shape we have applied some force of course to change the shape and due to that shape only the body the spring has some energy stored in that and that is the potential energy due to the shape of the body potential energy due to the shape of the body all right okay so these are the uh, mechanical energy potential and potential energy let's talk about the kinetic energy now kinetic energy what is the meaning of kinetic kinetic means motion that means the energy stored in a body due to its motion only is called the kinetic energy energy stored in a body due to its motion only is called the kinetic energy all right and this kinetic energy depends on the mass of the body and the velocity of the body how do you know that let's say you are standing somewhere here on the street okay a cycle a, a cycle bicycle comes with a, a bicycle comes with a velocity let's say 5 km per hour and hits you will get hurt of course right now if a motorbike comes with the same velocity and hits you will you get hurt more or less of course you will get hurt more now let's say there is a truck here comes with the same velocity 5 kilometers per hour and hits you what will happen to you i hope nothing happens like that anyway you will definitely get get hurt much much more right so in this case the velocity remains constant but the mass of the body changes mass of the truck is more than the mass of the bike motorbike and of course the mass of the motorbike is more than the bicycle all right that means the total kinetic energy uh, the, the energy stored in the body due to its motion depends on the mass of the body okay and if we do the same experiment with the same bike let's say uh, bicycle and if we simply increase the velocity 5 km per hour to 10 km per hour to 100 km per hour then also you will get hurt more why because that kinetic energy also depends on the velocity of the
upon it. Okay, so so measurement of kinetic energy is simply kinetic energy equals to half m v square. That's the measure of the kinetic energy stored in a body due to its motion. Half m v square. We can very very easily prove that. How? Let's say there is a body at rest. Body of mass m at rest. A force acts on the body. And due to that force, the body gains an acceleration A, let's say. Acceleration A along this direction. And in time T, the body goes up to a displacement D. Okay, in time T. Alright, and the final velocity of the body is V due to that force. Alright, so initial velocity U equals to 0. Now, we know that simply uh, S equals to from the equations of motion. Sorry. From the equations of motion, what do you know? V square equals to U square plus 2A S. Right. Here U is 0 because the body started from the rest. So V square equals to 2A S is D here. Therefore, A is what? Sorry. Therefore, T is what? V square by 2A. That's a displacement. Right? Acceleration is A. Okay. Now, force on the body is what? From the Newton's second law. M into A. Okay? Therefore, kinetic energy or let's say work done. Work done is force into displacement which is equals to m into a equals to m uh, sorry m a force into displacement is what v square by 2a equals to a a cancel that is half m v square that's my work done and that work done should be stored in the body as a kinetic energy all right that means the kinetic energy of the body equals to half m v square okay <coughs> potential energy due to the height is mgh kinetic energy is half m v square all right all right so these are the two mechanical energy kinetic and potential energy now we know that there is something called conservation of energy sorry conservation of energy law of conservation of energy what does it say it says that the total energy in a body is simply conserved okay the total energy of a body or in a system of body is conserved energy is conserved conserved we cannot create energy or we cannot destroy energy we can simply transform the form of the energy from one form to another form transform the energy from one form to another form the heat energy can be converted to the electrical energy light energy can be converted to the heat energy or electrical energy and something like that but we cannot create any energy or we cannot destroy any energy total energy is conserved if we followed uh, if you follow my videos from the beginning, there is a video called Conservation of Energy for a Freely Falling Body where I have explained that if a body is freely falling from a height h, let's say, then during the path of the fall of the body h at any position, the total energy, total energy means what? Total energy means what? Here in this case, the total mechanical energy is potential energy plus kinetic energy is conserved. Alright. That means at the top it was mgh. At the bottom also it is mgh. At middle, at any position, the total energy of the body is mgh. I have explained that thoroughly in that, uh, explained this proof thoroughly in that video so i'll give you the link of the video in the description you can check the video again all right so that's the law of conservation of energy total energy is conserved energy can neither be destroyed nor be created it can only be transferred from one form 
to another or it can only be converted from one form to another form all right that's the conservation of energy all right that's all for today i hope you have learned something from this video uh, so see you with some other topic in the next video till then take care